In the weather world, if it walks like a duck or quacks like a duck, it's not always a duck. Of course, I'm talking about the difference between a tropical cyclone and an extra tropical cyclone. First and foremost, a cyclone is a storm all around the world. In this part of the world, we know them as depressions, tropical storms, and hurricanes. Now, oftentimes in the early part of hurricane season or the end of hurricane season, even in the off season, we get these storms that on satellite and radar do look like tropical storms or hurricanes and bring impacts that are very similar to tropical storms or hurricanes, but they're not highlighted by the Hurricane Center and they don't have a name. So why is that? Well, we're going to talk about that over the next couple of minutes. The first thing I want to do here is define what a tropical cyclone is. There is a set meteorological definition that meteorologists look for to characterize these systems. In this part of the world, again, we know them as depressions, storms, or hurricanes. A tropical cyclone, you need to have a closed, well-defined circulation right at the surface. So that's number one you need to have to be a tropical cyclone. Number two this is really the main difference between a tropical cyclone and then an extra tropical cyclone, which we will get into coming up in just a second. It needs to have organized deep convection, that's a fancy term for thunderstorms, right around the center, wrapped around the center, and then maintain those thunderstorms as well. Now, these cyclones, tropical cyclones, get a name when the sustained winds around the center become greater than 39 miles an hour. So then you'll say, well, we've had storms that have not had a name and we've had wind gusts of greater than 39 miles an hour. And I'm not talking, or wind sustained winds of greater than 39 miles an hour. I'm not talking about those daily afternoon sea breeze storms either. I'm talking about the ones on satellite and radar that look like it. Well, there's a reason why the Hurricane Center hadn't highlighted them or named them. And the reason is because they are not tropical in nature. While they may bring similar impacts to us and it might look like it, schematically, they are not the same. They are built completely different. And we're going to talk about that right now from a surface level and then all the way up through the atmosphere. So bear with me here as we go on this journey. So we're going to start on the left first. This is the tropical side of things. And of course, we know that hurricane symbol there, unfortunately, all too well. Counterclockwise flow at the surface. It's tight around that surface. That's one of the main deals here. Now we're going to go to that bottom left screen here where you see the L and the H and that little orange blob. Those are the different layers of the atmosphere. Hurricanes and tropical systems don't like wind shear. They like to be vertically stacked, like a nice stack of pancakes on your plate, kind of like the Empire State Building versus the Leaning Tower of Pisa. They want to be vertically stacked. That's why they don't like wind shear. That's what we have going on here. So what starts out as low pressure at the surface actually turns to high pressure way up into the atmosphere. That's one of the reasons why tropical systems can develop that eye. When you get those strengthening tropical storms or hurricanes, high pressure starts to build on top of them. High pressure promotes sinking air. Sinking air not only warms, but it also dries things out, and that's what clears out the eye. One of the things that the hurricane hunters measure when they go into these storms are is the eye clearing out, for one. They can visualize that. And then the temperature of the eye, because if it's warming, that means it's strengthening because we know these as warm cord system so this is the main difference a tropical cyclone is warmed core is warm core and an extra tropical cyclone is cold core so for that we are going to go to the right side of the screen so we all know cold fronts we love these cold fronts when we're in august in september and we have been baking all summer long that first one typically comes around in october unfortunately but when you get these big ones that come out of the gulf a lot of times they can look like they are tropical in nature but they have fronts tied to them so again tropical systems do not have fronts tied to them extra tropical storms do they have the warm front here highlighted in those red little bubbles on the right hand side and then on the left you have the jagged teeth like the alligator teeth the blue there that represents the cold front so also at the surface, we have counterclockwise airflow. So they're both area of low pressure. Again, that's what happens in the Northern Hemisphere. We had that counterclockwise flow, but it's a little different. It's not tightly packed around the center. You have the southwest wind south of the warm front. You have more easterly winds north of the warm front. And then you have uh, northwesterly winds behind the cold front. So that is the difference at the surface. We don't have all of the, the worst of the weather tightly packed around the center like you would for a tropical storm or a hurricane. All right, last little picture at the bottom here, bottom right, this is the surface to upper levels in, when you're talking about an extra tropical cyclone, an upper level low. Basically what we have here, we have that area of low pressure at the surface again, but you see that blue shaded area 
pop up there, that blue color. That is the cold core nature of this. You see the dips there, the lower height lines as we go up, meaning that that ripple there is all of that colder air associated with that upper level low. So again, the main two differences here, if you take anything away from this, a tropical cyclone is a warmed core system that does not have fronts to it. It strengthens with the warmer waters of the ocean. It is something known as a barotropic low. On the right hand side, that extra tropical system, it gets its strength by differences in temperature and pressure in the atmosphere. We know these as baroclinic lows. And again, they get their strength from if it's really, really cold to the northwest and it's really, really warm to the southeast, that's when we get those really big nor'easters that oftentimes blow up along the coast and then kind of blast, in the wintertime anyway, the northeast with snow.